The previous piece for violin and viola is called Passacolia, and was composed in 1897, by Norwegian composer, Johan Halvorsen. It's actually based on another piece written 200 years earlier. Suite No. 7 MG minor for harpsichord by the composer, George Frederick Handel. Have a listen to the harpsichord version and compare it to the version for violin and viola. Why do you think Handel composed the piece for the harpsichord, and not the piano? Handel, along with J.S. Bach, was one of the greatest composers of the Baroque period. Handel was born in Germany, but he travelled widely and spent most of his life in England, where he wrote many pieces including operas. Operas are large-scale musical plays with singers and orchestra. Handel became very wealthy and famous during his lifetime. In contrast, J.S. Bach never left central Germany where he worked as a church musician. It wasn't until after his death that his true genius was discovered, and along with Mozart and Beethoven, he is regarded as one of the greatest composers of all time. Handel and J.S. Bach were excellent harpsichord players, an instrument that belongs to the keyboard family. The harpsichord along with the church organ were the main keyboard instruments in the Baroque time. It wasn't until the classical period, the time when Mozart and Beethoven lived, that the piano was invented. Hello, my name's Nick Buterman. I'm a viola player in the Philharmonia Orchestra. This is my viola. As you can see, it looks very much like a violin, and in many respects, it is identical in its mechanics. It's just perhaps one inch, one and a half inches longer, uh, which creates a lower sound as the string length generally is longer. We share three strings with a violin. The violin has a top E string, which we don't have. We have the A, and the D and the G and the bottom string that we have that the violins don't is the C which is one octave below middle C. The viola sits in the middle of the orchestra in terms of range between the violins which are the high and the cellos and the basses which are the low. Normally we play with a bow and when we play legato it sounds like this. If we play detaché which is separate bows. We can play off the string. We can play fast off the string. We can also use our fingers to pluck the strings. This we call pizzicato. The violas had a somewhat checkered history in terms of symphonic repertoire. The early symphonies used the viola often to double the bass line or to fill in the harmony in the centre of the chords, often coupling the second violins with the complemental figures. In other words, we rarely ever get the tune. So a viola part will often sound like this. As orchestral writing developed, Composers 
were a little more daring with what they were willing to try with the viola section. As we head into more contemporary orchestral music, you will see that composers place no restriction on the viola at all and do not typecast the viola. So for example, in Salonen's Violin Concerto, there's a solo for viola and cello. <laughs> So as you can see, the viola, like all string instruments, is very versatile, but we sit right in the middle of the orchestra with the heart of the string section. The viola features in this very sad and emotional piece by the 20th century American composer Samuel Barber. The piece is called Adagio for Strings and was written in 1936. Do you know what Adagio means? There are many different arrangements of this famous piece. In this recording it is performed by a string quartet. Do you know what instruments are in a string quartet? The piece has been used as a soundtrack in a number of movies, such as the 1987 movie, Platoon, a film, about the Vietnam War. Have a listen to the piece, and see if you can hear, the mellow quality, of the viola when it has the melody. <laughs> 